How are you? How's it going? It's good. How's everyone? Doing well, thank you. Okay, so good. today our training is about uh, stress management. Yeah, uh, something is going to be new for you, but most of things uh, in this uh, discussion are going to be some repetition for you of the things we've already had. Okay, so, and as always, I have some warm-up question for you. And what do you find most stressful about teaching? Or in general, what do you find stressful about teaching? Uh, let's start from you, Leila. Uh, I don't know, like, maybe some unexpected questions for which I don't have any answer. <clears throat> and yeah you said that like we cannot know everything like we cannot know the translation of each word in english but still when someone asks me something and i don't know the translation or the explanation i still feel stressed mm -hmm. thank you uh let's continue with thambi um i think for me it's time management that's really stressful for me. Mm -hmm. So if I do prep something and I run out of time to finish the, or to get uh, objectives into the lesson, or if I end the class too early and then we're just sitting there just looking at each other like, okay, <laughs> wait. Time, time, yeah. for, time for improvisation, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's continue with Shams. Yeah. yeah, I agree with uh, Leila that uh, sometimes uh, the unexpected questions can cause some stress and sometimes that some uh, weird words they are asking uh, that which are related uh, our own words, I mean uh, the Azerbaijani kind of words and sometimes I'm uh, panicking that maybe there is a equivalent of that word in uh, English but I don't know and uh, this kind of things here yeah, causes stress. All right, not knowing something. Thank you. Uh, Parvana, what about you? Um, I think just generally managing the class sometimes can be stressful. Uh, why? Because uh, sometimes students just uh, look bored, maybe. So mm -hmm. it can be stressful. You know, you have to just control everything and you have to just control all the students and look at them if, uh, I don't know, the question is interesting or not. That mm. kind of thing. All right. Yeah. I liked all your points, guys. Here we have uh, unexpected issues. Yeah, it can mm. be unexpected questions, right? Uh, actually, I forgot to mention that the most stressful things for me, uh, the loss of internet connection, I always panic. I forget what I say, yeah, what I'm going to say always, but it's so stressful for me. It's important not, uh, in this kind of moments, not to break any piece of technology. Uh, <laughs> very important, because sometimes the stress can be so big that you can break something, something right? Um, yeah, well, in my life, I've broken my phone, but it wasn't because of lesson. It was just everything just was loading on me. And in one moment, I decided just to break my phone. And it was old, you know. I was thinking in this moment, maybe I'll, I'll anyway, I'll get you one. Um, okay. So most of the time, we just take our phones. We want to break it, but then we just throw it on the bed. Um, okay. Then you remember that you are not that rich and you cannot just simply throw yeah, it away. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So let's go to our lovely whiteboard and see what we have here. To understand how to manage uh, stress, we have to understand the reasons of this. What can cause stress? Um, I'll be honest, I'll try it also to take some external information to deliver for you. And there is some, 
very popular philosopher. He's from India. I don't know, Osho or something. And he was speaking about stress that uh, how can you say uh, this notion, stress management? Stress, it's not something that we have to really manage because uh, the things we really have to manage is something we value. It can be our family, it can be sometimes our work, you know, but stress is something inside of our mind and our mentality. So that's why we don't need to think about its management. We have to think how to bring our um, state into the mental sustainability. Yeah. So um, I like this idea. However, he didn't explain how we can do that, but I'm sure he has some book about it. Okay, so let's write here reasons of stress. Uh, of course, at the end of my things I'm going to tell you here, you can add something from you. So let's first emphasize expectations, yeah. expectations so before the lesson or it can be some other things in your life yeah so let's try to speak about stress not something related to teaching it's related to our life actually because most of time and uh, that is the second point uh, we have some external matters which influence our teaching experience uh, something out of our teaching, something out of our profession, uh, some life issues and so on. Um, sometimes students can be the reason of stress because it's quite normal to have in your teaching experience someone you don't really want to teach. Yeah, it can be different reasons for that. Maybe they're, uh, I don't know, conscious things, or you don't like just their aura, their energy they give you, and so on. Um, okay, so let's write here, students. Now let's regard each of this point. Yeah, about expectations. Um, you don't know what the future holds, but we can be ready for all possible. Let me write this. Um, we don't really know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's not something new for you. It's not some notion. Um, but we can be prepared at least for all possible. By telling all possible, you just prepare in your mind, in your idea, what can possibly happen in future. So we don't know what the future holds, but we can get ready for all possible. Yeah. So all possible, I want to emphasize again, that is relative things, yeah? For me, all possible is something else. For you, all possible is something else. Um, if you ask me what does it depend on, this all possible relativeness, it depends on your experience. Whenever you're going to know more and practice more, uh, your all possible range is going to expand, right? You're going to see more things in the future. Kind of you're going to be some, I don't know, predictors um, okay so the first one I actually I've taken that from the um, answers you given you're giving me that is um, have already yeah so everything you have in your lessons which is going to be have it ready sometimes uh, we just give some platform for improvisation yeah that's not bad if, you, if you're confident that you can hold it. But whenever you think about that you're going to improvise 10 minutes, it's always risk. Everything can happen, right? 
And then you have some stress. Most of the time when we have stress and we ask ourselves, what is the reason, we cannot find it. Because the reason is something deeper. And that can be one of the reasons. You prepare some 10 minutes of your lesson for improvisation because you know that you're going to have this time. But unconsciously, you already, your brain starts uh, getting worried about it. Okay, the second one, of course, lesson plan. Yeah, so I hope that this combination of words um, doesn't sound so uh, frightening to you now because lesson planning can be just a little piece of paper where you can write your warm-up stage and if you have pre all prepared questions yeah and if you know how to organize a feedbacking session very good for your students um, then there can be not a big platform for the uh, expectation stress right Okay, then plan A and B and C and D, why not? Um, okay, maybe you don't need to uh, make so big a fort on A, B, C, D and whatever. A, B is possible. So um, you have A plan and you also have always B plan prepared. With this, you will be sure that if something happens, I will do something else. Um, so yeah, when you have everything prepared, everything ready, you still can have some stress about your lesson. What if I'm going to have weak internet connection? Yeah. Um, so that's why plan B. <laughs> well, with internet connection, I think plan B can be just relax. Yeah. Um, okay. And the last one, take it easy. Take it easy. All the things but professional. Take it easy, but professional. So uh, by taking it easy, I don't mean that you just, um, you just need to say that I don't care what's happening around of my teaching experience. For instance, you're yeah, coming back to the poor internet connection. Take it easy, but inform your uh, people who is responsible for all these things that I have some problems with internet connection. If you are able to inform your students, that's also fine. Yeah. If the internet connection is fine, just for you to announce that guys, sorry, but we have some problems with internet connection. That's going to be fine. Yeah. Okay. And it can be some problems. Let's emphasize them. Um, about connection. Let me write it a bit more. Okay. What else I have here? Oh, okay. Technical issues. Yeah, so sometimes connection is all right but you have some technical problems. It can be camera, it can be your computer, yeah. So in here, no panic, just uh, repair it if you can yourself. If not, um, go to the repair, like computer repair store, right? So some servers. Yeah, for some people when they uh, have their computer broken it's the end of the world but for some people they just understand that that's broken i have to go to service repair it and go back to my job yeah so if you see this clearly then you're not going to have the stress about it what else we have here yeah and try to solve it as up right so infirm the people who has to know about your problem and solve it as uh, Then we can have problem of unsuccessful lesson. Mm. 
Yeah, that happens as well. So actually that is the main thing. Yeah, you think that everything is going to be unsuccessful uh, sometimes and you're worried about it. But if you think in, from the other perspective about it, uh, for example, okay, if it's going to be unsuccessful, I'm going to take uh, feedbacks from my students and work on them. We have no place. Okay, I'll try to create some place here. Dun, dun, dun. Is it possible to? Nope. Yeah, Zoom need to work a bit more on their annotation. Because it's so long, not operative to work with that. Okay, and work on them. So again, we're coming to the uh, point that never stop learning, right? Because even if your lesson was fine and you feel that it is the best lesson I've ever had. In a feedback session, you can get some feedback from the student that seemed very happy about your lesson, you know. All right, external matters. What we can have here, guys? Let me start. Okay, that can be distract distractors. We have a lot of distractors in our life. Um, that can be apps we use. Yeah. So I guess that Instagram might be the biggest problem that most of people have. Yeah, nowadays. Then it can be cereals. <laughs> Depends, if you have very good cereal from Netflix then, and you cannot stop, and you rather go and watch the cereal um, than start working on the lesson plan, then it can be a problem. And then it can be a reason of stress, right? So we just watch the cereal because we say that, uh, that's a nice cereal, I want to watch it. And then we have stress about our lesson planning, right? So again, uh, that stands for the time management. Okay, distractors. For distractors, I have uh, something that I thought myself how I can do. For instance, um, I'm not a big fan, but I like playing uh, one game which called Bomber Friends. Yeah, coming to Instagram, I don't have Instagram. I decided not to open it ever in my life. Um, so, and that, that is the game, you can see it here, Bomber Friends. I like playing that, that that's quite fun. Uh, it was here, it was in here, yeah. And I started thinking, what if I'll take some application which I need for my developing, to the place where this game icon is, yeah. So I just took two applications, which is very important for me, yeah, to improve things, yeah, which I'm doing. And whenever I go there and I want to play this game, automatically I go on that application. Yeah, because we have some um let's say motorism stuff yeah in our brain you already know where is the instagram yeah uh, on your phone where's the icon how we can reach it very fast and if you put some other icon there which you really need to enter instead of instagram let's say then it's going to work yeah okay then personal issues Well, it can be something in your family, something in a relationship, something with your friends, and so on. Well, here, I'm not going to say anything new. Try to find a way to divide professional and personal fields, right? These issues. Um, if you start working, forget about everything and start working. That's really hard. That depends on problem. That depends on issue. If it's something really hard, 
Yeah, we are not robots. It still influence on us. But mentally, we can try to just concentrate on work. Yeah, while we're working. Then we have multitasking. Yeah. So uh, in most of places and also work, they say that you're multitasking very good, good job and so on. Um, but coming to the question that if we're doing something and a lot of things at once, yeah, at the same moment, uh, then actually it can be the cause of stress. We might think that we're not going to finish all these things, but if we are going to concentrate on one uh, task, yeah, and um, then we will do it gradually. So that's why for this we need to set priorities. That's very important. If you don't have priorities, yeah, if you haven't structured your tasks for today or for your life, yeah, for achieving some goal, it's going to be harder for you to understand what you should do now and what you can uh, leave for other time, right? So that's why try to set priorities. Yeah, you can work on yourself. Just take a piece of paper and write your priorities. Then think what is on the first place, second place, and so on. Okay, then, uh, as I've told you, focus on one task. And then I have here time, time your day. Okay. When we're coming to the point of time management, most of time our stereotype thinking about it tells us that you have to create some schedule of your day. Yeah. Monday is for this, Tuesday is for that. Well, um, from my point of view, it doesn't really work like this. Um, you just set some goals for today and it doesn't matter when you're going to do them. You just set goal that today, 30 minutes, I'm going to do this. Yeah, not at 2 or 3 p.m. It doesn't matter. It's just you, I have to do this. Yeah, so you set priorities. You said that you have to do it today. You set some goals. And with this, it's better to do. Because when you have some timetable on your wall that today I'm going to do these things at two, at three, um, time can pl uh, play a big pressure role on you. And you can think, oh my God, I'm not going to catch this, right? So that's why don't think about time. Think about goal you have to finish today and also priorities. Sometimes when it's the end of the day and you understand that you haven't finished some tasks, ask yourself, is it really my priority to finish it today or I can leave it for tomorrow? All right, what do we have here? Um, have a rest. That's very important, guys. The way how you uh, rest, yeah. So if you think that having a rest is going and watching serials, well, that doesn't work like this. Um, having a rest for your brain is not getting much information because serials is also information. It's a flow of emotions. So that's why your brain gets tired of that as well, right? And you don't really have a rest. Um, surfing the internet, also flow of information to your brain you're not really having a rest having a rest go for a walk right <laughs> now we don't have that much quarantine so or listen to the music that that can be also work yeah but try not to get so close to emotional music yeah so <laughs> it can finish just with you crying and yeah Okay, so also we'll touch one of the point is that uh, physical and what are the mental 
state. Uh, physical and mental state, that, that is the main thing that should be actually at the first place. But I took, it, I took it here because we're going also to see some other sub points of this. You'll be surprised, but uh, doing exercises, yeah, stretching or something can help you to be energetic all the day. Yeah. So staying at home, uh, yeah, while staying at home, we know that it was really hard for us just to wake up uh, in time. Yeah, I mean, in the morning where actually we can be very productive. Um, and uh, during the day, you can feel a big pressure in your body. You know, like you just feel that something just takes you down. Yeah. But if you try doing exercise every morning, you can feel actually a big energy from nowhere. Yeah, so it can help. Then, good uh, nutrition. Okay. That can help as well, guys. The things you eat actually represents you. So that's why I try to eat in time. Yeah. Um, drink water. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. For instance, I always have two liters of water next to me. It's very important. Yeah. Um, so try to drink water at least. Yeah. So it can bring you a big, let's say, effect yeah, in your teaching. Um, eat. I don't know, healthy things, yeah. Okay. So that is external matters. What else we have here? And here we have students. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as I've told you, sometimes uh, we don't want to teach someone. And it's a normal state, guys. Um, I've had this kind of students in my experience, yeah. And whenever I was entering the classroom, I was telling, <clears throat> yeah, like inside of me that I have to stand this one hour. Yeah, I have to do something with the student and that's all. And with that, your motivation of uh, teaching the student goes down, yeah. And as a result, you're not coming to some results, yeah. Okay. Um, and here, the solutions can be that. We have to um, look at the student, not personally, but professionally. Yeah, so, and that's why we can first define the type of the student, try to, and then try to adapt to the type of student. Yeah, we can also add here that take it professional, not personal. Mm -hmm. Then, try to know more about this kind of students. Yeah, that sounds a bit, uh, let's say, as a contradictionally, but try to know more about them. And then you will actually could find the way to their heart. Yeah, to something that is um, behind the student stereotype. Yeah, behind the student. Okay, so know them better or know more about them. Sometimes yet the students you don't like, they can be selfish and they need some attention. They want you um, 
to know more about them, you know, to just ask more questions about um, their, let's say, personal life and what they're really doing in their life. And with that, they could actually open this door yeah, to the negotiation and they would accept your feedbacks about their behavior, about their uh, mistakes. Yeah, some students, they are not able to just accept mistakes. Yeah. But if you get closer to them, they will feel, oh, my friend. Yeah, that is the, <laughs> that is the shape that you've created around you. My friend has made some feedback to me, yeah, so. Okay. And when everything is out of the control with this kind of students, yeah, in offline education, it can bring to fights, for example. If you cannot solve the problem, then it is important to be professional and share your issues you have with particular students with your manager or coordinator i don't know how we really call them in dildo yeah so <clears throat> later on i mean at the end of our sets of training uh, we're going to create some network for you yeah where you could write your problems, your questions, anything you would love. And all teachers are going to see this. Yeah, they will try to help you with their comments or their suggestions. And also they are going to learn of it and you're going to learn of it. So I think that networking is very important, which we don't uh, yet have. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and the main point here is never stop learning. All these three expectation, internal matters and students, they all stick to your experience. Yeah. So that's why never stop learning about teaching and never stop getting experience about that. Yeah. So let's write this here, never. No, that I don't want to scream. Uh, never stop learning and getting more experience. Yeah. So, and this point about learning more and getting more experience, it's actually the key solution to uh, getting rid of stress. Yeah. Because... When you get more experience, you understand more your expectations you're going to have yeah, uh, regarding to the lesson. Um, you would understand more how to divide your personal issues and professional areas. And you would understand more how to get closer to your students, knowing them more. Yep. Um, okay, so here are the three things from me, yeah, which I see the reason of stress. Would you like to add something? nope okay let's come in let's come back to the things that you've told like your answers to the question what do you find stressful about teaching unexpected well yeah Lila, i use us yeah okay um yeah um that is here mainly yeah that that's normal that it's unexpected yeah and when we have questions yeah something like how to say that in English, yeah? That can be sometimes uh, silly questions, yeah? For example, how to say this in English, and that is the fully Azerbaijani expression, yeah? Or a phrase, and then you have to find it. Well, if you don't know, it's again, normal to say that, I don't know but i'll get back to you with your with the answer don't worry yeah <clears throat> um if you if you can find the translation of some word very fast you have to have everything prepared have already yeah so me personally i always have 
open translation just somewhere yeah i don't use it but in this extreme moments i just can say something yeah for example they say how to say uh again tab uh tabiat and i say oh maybe some some kind of tabiat and they start laughing and i have time for searching and i say um you can say nature that's the best thing you can say about it yeah so try to take some time for yourself using uh, sarcasm or some jokes and then uh, go to the translator. Yeah, there's nothing bad in it. But very important, after you know the translation of this word and the meaning of this word, add it somewhere to learn it for you. Yeah. So for this, I have the application AnkiDroid. Yeah, that is... Uh, at the place where was my game. Uh, and I add there some words which I might forget and I don't know at all. Yeah. All right, about not knowing something. If you don't know something, it's, it's okay to say your student, I don't know it, but I'll get back to you. Yeah, if you just say, I don't know it, it's going to sound not professional, yeah add to that i'm going to get back to you with the answer <clears throat> okay so you can take some time to find the answer during the lesson when someone is answering but here you have to be a bit multitasking uh, during the lesson to listen to their mistakes probable mistakes and to their ideas and plus searching for the answer during the lesson and in your feedback session, you can say, okay, so that's the answer uh, I can give you about the question you asked me at the beginning. And with that, they will feel, oh, wow. So she paid some attention on that. Hmm, management. Well, about management, we've had already a lot of discussions. Yeah, we found out the structure, how we can plan the lesson, how we can have different type of students. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and about plan B, guys. Um, if it's always, uh, it's always hard to find this plan B. Yeah. So what I do for that, uh, if I don't really have any idea for plan B, I just take some related visual to the topic or any visual that can be very interesting for them. And that's my plan B. If, for example, the questions are going to be out already, plan B, show them some picture and discuss it, for instance. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now my question is uh, from these three things. Uh, what do you find the most, let's say, challenging for you in your stress management experience? Uh, I would love to start from you, Lila. Um, I don't know, like, in external matters, they are not, like, a problem for me because I think I can be, like, ready for the lesson when it starts and there is actually one student i really don't like in our conversations but like there's nothing i can do about it and yes like i think i'm fine mm -hmm. uh why don't you like the student is there any personal reasons no i don't know him Personally, so it's a guy. <laughs> I don't know mm -hmm. him personally, but I don't like his opinions. Like I have heard his opinions about so many topics, so that's why I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can start getting closer to this person, yeah, knowing this person better, yeah, and it can I help you maybe. I think if I know him better. I will dislike him more, so I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can be surprised, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. by knowing, let's say, not so nice people closer, we can actually find out that they're not that bad. 
they have their reasons to be bad or their reasons to be negative here. Because negativeness comes from the factors in our life, from other people, yeah. Some people, they can just go out by seeing negativeness from their mother, yeah. And then going to school and sharing this negativeness with their peers and classmates. All right, yeah. So by getting closer to them, you will understand their reason of being so. Mm -hmm. Let's clean this all. Mm -hmm. Let's continue with Shams. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the question was, <laughs> I delete. No, that. I know. I know. Question. I know. Question. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh. Actually, I think like Leila. Um. That, for example, all those um, external matters happen. For example, I'm not in my mood for teaching, but uh, when I start teaching, I already forget and I enjoy lesson. For example, during quarantine, joining this platform helped me a lot uh, to spend my day and to enjoy because I'm also a part of the conversation sometimes and I feel that um, yeah I'm talking to my friends and sometimes yeah, students can be a problem but I have some students that I dislike I wouldn't like them to be in my conversation but not too much I can say that the most difficult and challenging one is expectation expectation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right thank you Thank you. Uh, let's continue with Parvana. Okay. Uh, actually, I have no problems with uh, this, let's say, poem so much. But uh, I also think that sometimes expectations can be stressful, uh, especially about asking, uh, let's say, some questions or about the translation of words. At that time, you, you're not able to just remember the word. Uh, it can be stressful and you don't know that how students will react to that at that situation. So mm -hmm. expectations, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, so coming back to this uh, point about that, if you don't know something, it is just stereotype that teachers should know everything. Yeah, we cannot do that. It's impossible. But uh, we can work on ourselves. And being open with students and telling that uh, maybe it can be this one, but I'm not sure I'll get back to you with the answer. Yeah, so that's, that's not bad, actually. You just show them that I am one of you. I'm also learning by teaching. Yeah, the only difference you're learning, but I'm learning by teaching. Um, okay, and Sambi, what about you? Um, for me, I think it's also expe expectations. Um, yeah, I think and sometimes if you if you are prepared for the lesson, there's always unexpected things that actually jump in the lesson that if you've not come across them in lessons before or you've not seen them. It can be stressful in ways you can be stressed instead of trying to overcome the situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as I've told here, yeah, when you have some unsuccessful experience, you always have a chance to take feedbacks and work on them and get better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't do that, uh then in the future it can be uh, more and more unsuccessful lessons like that because you don't yeah. know the reason it happens right what you can fix in that okay thank you for your opinion and let's continue with uh, some technique that can help you uh to have mainly positive expectations about things yeah, so it will look a bit strange, but who cares? Um, that's one hand. That's another hand. No thumbs. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we have six of them. Yeah, is that fine? <laughs> I can draw one, one more, like, okay, over here. Okay, good. Uh, now it looks real. Um, and the technique I'm going to talk about is called called pros cons technique. So here on one palm, palm, let's write pluses. Yeah, pluses of your ex like positive expectations. And here you have negative expectations. And what you do, you start from negative expectations, stage one. Visualizing negative result, yeah, or expectation or things that could happen. Then, second fast change, and here we have we change to the positive result that is stage three visualizing positive result and then uh, going back to one, to stage one. Okay, so how it works, guys. Um, that is some technique that helps and train our brain uh, how to replace negative result, negative expectations with positive expectations. <clears throat> So you open your hand and you start visualizing on your hand the negative result. And whenever you have some already visualized image over here, you switch it to the positive and you start visualizing positive. And on positive, you stand more. You try to visualize every positiveness that could happen as a result of your expectations. Okay. And then you switch again and then you switch again. So that, that, uh, this way your brain will, uh, will get trained how to replace negative expectations into positive immediately. And whenever you're going to have some negative expectations, they're going to be replaced by positive. Yeah. For example, flying on the plane. Yeah, if you have some aerophobia, I guess that is a good term for that. Um, and you think that the plane is going to crash somewhere in there, um, then it's going to be switched for the positive. No, I'm going to land normally. I'm going to see, I don't know, another country, travel there. Yeah. Um, so this way you train your brain. And that is not that I sought out yeah in my free time of doing nothing no it is some psychological stuff which i found for you which you can use yeah and whenever you're going to uh, like how much you're going to tr train your brain with that it's going to give really good results and you're going to get rid of the negative expectations i don't say that they are not going to be in your life Without negative, uh, negative expectations can be also very effective when we understand that maybe I don't need to do that. I need to stop doing that. When we see that minuses are more than pluses here. Yeah. Okay, and very shortly I'm going to ask you last 
question. And how do you find, uh, fight with stress? What are your ways? Maybe you can tell us something interesting which we can use as well. Yeah. Maybe you use this technique already. I don't know about it. Yeah. So before the lesson, you just. Um, all right. Let's start from Parvana, maybe. Yeah, Parvana. So what are your ways uh, to fight with stress? Uh, actually, I have no interesting ways to fight for stress. Uh, when I'm stressful, uh, I just listen to, let's say, positive music and I do exercise. I think stretching is better for stress. That's all. I, I like this, uh, especially about music. Yeah, you can listen to some music as well, guys. It can be very good. Yeah. But I've heard uh, this idea about music that when you have bad mood and you're stressed, you can listen to music. But when the music ends, the stress comes back. Yeah. Uh, depends. Depends. Yeah, like with me, it doesn't work like this. When I'm stressed, I can listen to some really good song. And after that, I can feel that everything is fine. I have to take it easy. Uh, let's continue with Stambi. Thank you, Parvana, for your idea. Um, for me, um, like Pravana, I work out, um, I dance, and if it's really bad, I'll probably take a nap, and hopefully when I wake up, it's not as stressful as I anticipated. But also, it depends on what the stressor is, but sometimes I also find um, practicing, if it's something like a public speaking event, and I find like practicing over and over and over again until I like get crazy about it, and then that has helped the stress a little bit. All right. Mm -hmm. when, when, when you're so confident about doing something, right? Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you, thank you. And Leila, what about you? Um, I think fresh air in the short term and constant learning in the long run. So the more you know, the more confident you will be about the lessons. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, uh, you've touched our points, yeah, which we've had on our training. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, let's continue with Shams. Um, in my opinion, I always um, eat something when I'm stressful, although I try to avoid it uh, in last decade. But um, for, for now, I always drink a cup of coffee. Uh, it helps me to get rid of stress. Mm -hmm. All right, some caffeine. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so that was actually all. Um, I'll just tell you about my ways, how I get rid of stress. I don't know, <laughs> maybe with this yeah, technique, but I've, I've never used that, I'll, I'll be honest with you, but I want to start using it when I have something really stressed in my life. Um, but mainly I try to see positive sides, yeah. Before maybe I was more negative about expectations, but now, um, whenever I know that this thing should be done, there is no other way. So it's, it's going to be better for me to start thinking about it positively, but be ready for negative. Yeah. Be, uh, having plan B that can be your negative expectation. All right. Thank you so much for the training. Do you have any questions or maybe feedbacks what we can do better? Nope, 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 and nope. Okay, so thank you so much for the thank training. Thank you for this. Guys. Yeah, thank you, Halsa. Goodbye. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Shams. Thank you, thank you so, very guys, much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. See you on Friday. Right.